Hey, what's happening, everybody? So this video is a successor or to make it much more plain and simple, simply put, a follow-up to the video about the top reasons I miss being a gig economy-based food delivery driver. For some of you who would like to be able to click on that video, it is already posted on my channel from making earlier. So at your most uh, convenient time, you could be able to click on the video to see some of the top reasons why I miss being a gig economy delivery based driver. Anyway, on this particular video, this is about the downsides of what I don't miss of being a full delivery based gig economy driver. Number one is me being able to not anymore have to worry about putting any more wear and tear on my vehicle because the, uh, when I was doing gig economy based work as a delivery driver for Postmates, um, Grubhub, because Grubhub was my bread and butter or my main gig that I like driving for, uh, when I, that I drove a little bit for DoorDash, which was one of the most lowest paying gig apps that I personally thought didn't, just didn't pay as much. Overall, I thought that Grubhub paid more than all of them because I drove not only for DoorDash, Grubhub, and Postmates, but I also did some driving for Instacart. Now, Instacart paid pretty decent. I won't lie at all about the pay through Instacart. For some of you who may not still be on game or know much about Instacart, it's practically a grocery-based gig economy um, app service where uh, you get to order your groceries for all you people who like to order online, which I'm sure the majority of you do now like to do due to smartphones and apps because there's pretty much apps for anything you may need um, help with or anything you may, um, to put it another way, to just have interest in or what it may be sports related, shopping related, just to name a few. Anyway, I also drove for, when not the four of those, I drove also for Uber Eats for a short time. Um, on the side note, I did even delivery, ride share for both Uber and Lyft. Although I was putting much more wear and tear my vehicle as an Uber and Lyft driver, but I digress. Anyway, and once again, I wanted to go into detail about what I do not miss at all about being a gig delivery uh, economy based driver. And again, the, the number one thing that I don't miss is having the put more and more wear and tear on my vehicle. For you, all of you who didn't see the video that was the precursor to this video, I went into detail about um, how and whenever you're a gig economy based delivery driver, or it could just be a delivery driver for a restaurant such as Domino's Pizza, Pizza Hut, restaurants of that nature, you're putting a whole lot more wear and tear on your vehicle, excuse me, which means that the value of your vehicle depreciates very quickly. And because of that, if you were to try to trade in your vehicle because of that, or whenever you were, wanted to trade in your vehicle for a much more newer vehicle, you wouldn't hardly get anything in appraisal or trade-in value because of all the wear and tear and mileage on your vehicle. Um, and <clears throat> not only that, but... The second thing that I don't miss about being a gig economy based app food delivery driver is um, how when I was doing gig economy based work full time as a food delivery driver, once again, for what it may have been for Grubhub, DoorDash, um, Postmates, Instacart. I, from time to time, could be in a process 
of being on my way to deliver for a certain, excuse me, certain customer diner, out of the blue may get a call while driving and in the middle of doing delivery for a particular customer about the ETA in delivering for a driver or excuse me for a, a specific customer they may have ordered from what it may have been from a grocery store um, for, through Instacart or if not that what it may have been from a restaurant through Grubhub, DoorDash or Postmates either or they expected for me to tell them while driving and in the process of delivering for a customer to just be able to estimate just out of the blue of how long it would take for me to deliver to that customer what do you expect i'm driving and i could have a wreck for christ's sakes and with that being said i'm sure if i would have had a wreck in the process of being able to tell them about the ETA for delivering for whatever customer, they wouldn't care, not one bit. Another thing, and the final thing that I do not miss at all about being a Grubhub, Postmates, DoorDash, or to put it another way, a gig economy delivery based driver is having to deliver. In rough neighborhoods because there were times when I would deliver especially at nighttime in rough neighborhoods and not only that but from time to time I used to have a hard time seeing the dresses on the houses or it could not even be houses it could be apartments late at night and some of my people who may be viewing this video could relate to that situation or scenario because I'm sure for some of you who do food delivery still until this day, whether it may be for you know, a restaurant or a gig economy based platform, that may, may be times where you may drive through really dark neighborhoods, even worse, neighborhoods with no lighting for crying out loud. And not only that, but trying to contact the customer while looking for their home to deliver to, but not being able to get a cell phone signal. That happened to me a couple of times as well. So I'm going to conclude this video, folks. And for all the people who may follow me on YouTube but not may not still be into social media like that, you could also email me at my personal email address, which is right down below at the bottom of the screen. And also for the people who do um, follow me, on social media whether you may follow me on YouTube or Twitter because most of my videos most of my all of my previous videos are on my previous excuse me on my Twitter page as well I want you to also like the video please you know, like the video um, subscribe to the channel and when you do subscribe to the channel you'll see three options you'll see an all option to be notified of all upcoming videos and be notified of all upcoming videos that i plan on posting in the near future you'll see a none notification and not be notified of any more upcoming videos at all you may just want to be a subscriber may just be comfortable and be a subscriber last but not least you may see a personalized notification um, as far as that goes, and if I'm not mistaken, according to the YouTube algorithm, it's based upon if you may be into certain kinds of videos, if you may be subscribed to my channel, but instead of being notified of every last single video that I may post in the near future, you may um, like to be notified of or alerted of videos that may suit your personal interest if I'm not, not mistaken that's what it meant is meant by personalized um, videos for as far as notifications go once again you will have the all notification bell to click the personalized notification bell and a none notifications bell most of all I need you to all click the all notification bell to be notified of every single last one of my upcoming videos 
and upcoming content because I will be posting more and more upcoming content again in the very near future. On that note, have a good day. Oh, <laughs>